It's time for joy. It's time for sisterhood. It's time for all to experience for colored girls. This April on Broadway, resilience blooms into passion, poetry, music, and dance that explodes off the stage in this reinvention of the iconic masterpiece. Fearlessly new, fiercely now, for colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. 20 weeks only. Get tickets today and join the celebration. Good afternoon and welcome back to My Harlem Portrait, the show that wants to shed the light on the fundamental contribution of African-Americans to the building of this country and on Black excellence. And to talk and about Black excellence today, we have a very special guest who is one of the cast member of a very, uh, well-known, a trailblazing play, which is a real landmark in American theater as a, and has inspired generation. We are talking about four colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. The revival of Ntasake Schenge is now back on Broadway at the same theater where it was played and performed in the 70s, the Boo Theater. And uh, this show, it's composed by 21 poems performed on stage in a fusion of poetry, dance, music, and song by seven women dressed in the seven colors of the rainbow. Our exceptional guest today is one of these ladies, the lady in green. Mm -hmm. Welcome to my Arlen portrait. Okwi Okpok Wasili. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you, Maria. I'm very happy you could find the time to, to be with us. You are a performer, a choreographer, and a writer. You create multidisciplinary performance pieces that are, and I quote you, at the interception of theater, dance, and the installation. Tell us a little bit about your art. Mm, I think my work is very much um, concerned with thinking about an entire world, right? Thinking about um, how a character moves, how a character sounds, what happens when a character is overwhelmed and cannot speak? What is the movement that happens after speech, right? Sometimes what is the, you know, how do speech, dance, and song all come together in this in a dynamic um, relationship, right? And so, so I think that's and and also I try to think about what is my relationship to audience? How close can they be? How far are they? Um, what is the potential of enveloping? Right? What are what is the gift of sharing space in time together? Right? How do you take advantage of the fact that? you know, people aren't in the screen, but they're actually in a room with you sharing breath. So I'm always so, so no one piece of mine looks like any other piece, but mm -hmm. these are all things that I'm, I'm considering. Um, but often my, my work is very much focused on black women, African women, um, thinking about the diaspora, thinking about um, ways in which we, um, might play against um, stereotypes, ways in which we break through and, um, I don't know, have the space to be human. Um, so I guess that's, that's, that's what I can say about my work right now. That's pretty much, it's, it sounds very, very interesting. Uh, you were nominated for a distinguished performance by the Drama League and for the Lucille Lauter Awards for Outstanding Featured Actress in a Play. And both times that was for Colored Girls. Were you performing The Lady in Green or you were performing another? I was performing The Lady in Green in, in, in for those nominations, yeah. Tell me about but those I, but experiences. I also tell you about the experience of performing Lady in Green. Um, and the nominations. Well, the nominations are were lovely. I mean, that happened right as we were in COVID lockdown, you know. Oh. So, in the midst of um, what has been, a, you know, obviously a life-altering, world-altering pandemic, 
um, to get that recognition at that time was was a lovely boon for me. Um, and, you know, I'm playing the lady in green now as well. And so I just feel like I am fortunate enough in that I just get to keep delving deeper, discovering more in the poems, loving the poems more, like just getting them, you know, they're becoming a part of my DNA. And, and I feel really, I feel really lucky, you know, to, to have this text and these, this language in my body, you know? Yes, fantastic. It's becoming part of you. Yeah. Um, is it Sashita, the woman in green that you're playing? No, and no. I think well, that was in, the original, right? Yes, yes. I think in, the woman in green um, danced Sachita. I don't, I never know. I'm always like, is it Sashita, Sachita? I'm not sure how to say it, but we say Sachita. Okay. Um, but no, the lovely and talented Alexandria Wales is playing the lady in purple who dances that part, but also um, as a deaf actress and a dancer and, a, 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 you know, and someone who does uh, artistic sign language, she um, has found a way to dance that poem while signing. So she, along with what we have as a director of artistic sign, she works with uh, the director of artistic sign to build vocabulary that is both true to the poems, but also um, is true to the poems. But if you speak sign language, you can, you know, read what's being said. I mean, it's literal like choreography. That. Yes, it's literal choreography, right? If choreography is a kind of, writing in space um, with the body. That's exactly what Our Lady in Purple does uh, for that um, monologue. And it's just beautiful. Uh, we do have also another incredible woman, Lady in Orange, um, Amara Granderson, who will be, who will be speaking the text um, in a kind of a, a, another a layering. Um, yeah, so I don't get to do that, but I, I am present for that. And it's a delight. Fantastic. So which which lady, what, what are the poems and who is the lady that you are going to interpret? Tell us about well, this. Well, I think one of the poems that I get to do that I think is something that feels like a bit of an anthem for people is um, uh, somebody almost walked off with all of my stuff, right? Uh -huh. And I, it is a poem um, where I, the lady in green, where I speak about, um, you know, that someone always almost took things that are important and essential to me, things that are, you know, a critical part of who I am. And it's interesting to listen to people respond to that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, sometimes you have people in the audience and they're saying it with you, because I think a number of people have had experiences um, especially personal experiences with relationships where, you know, they've gotten so lost in a relationship, they don't recognize themselves. And it's only until after the relationship, they realize, wait a minute, this person almost walked off with all of the things that are the best thing about me or that, that I, you know, that, um, that make up what you are. And I think a lot of people have had that experience. I also think there's something about, you know, appropriation in that poem. I think there are a lot of, um, We've had to contend with um, a lot of issues over who possesses what culturally, right? Who possesses what song, who possesses, who started what, you know, dance movement. And um, we know that a lot of black people have had things stolen from them and haven't been credited for it. We also know that, you know, my family is, they're Igbo people um, from Nigeria. And, and we also know there is, a museum being constructed in Benin City right now with the hopes of um, repatriating and bringing back stolen artifacts. You know, so I mean, I think there are some there. It's just this particular poem idea is largely resonant because of how it speaks um, on multiple registers to the idea of something that is essential to you being taken from you, stolen from you or almost stolen. So. That yeah, that's, that's the one for everybody, you know. Beautiful. And uh, it, it's three poems, right? That uh, 
each one of you resides? This is a good question, Maria. You're so funny. I have not, I haven't actually counted. <laughs> I just like to be swimming and I feel like it's, you know, the poems are kind of this grand, they're all like tributaries, right, into yeah. some grand river, you know, that that we emerge into at the end. So I haven't been counting. I just I just try to swim along with them. But um, I yeah, I don't I'm you you're doing your research. I, I don't know. I feel like um, Camille, I mean, has 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 done some um, very, very beautiful things to shift and change some things. She has added some things. Um, so it is absolutely not at all like the original and it's not like the public. It is a completely um, reimagined, um, reimagined piece and I think she has been doing it with a lot of care and respect and in conversation with Ntozaki Shange's estate, right? Yeah. But I think Ntozaki Shange, like she, you know, maybe we call it a play, but she called it a choreo poem, right? Mm -hmm. So she is, she is someone who is an experimenter. She is, she is like, she was, um, she, she was a trailblazer, as you said. And um, I think, I think I would be really interested in it, but I think she would be, really excited to see how, you know, people take in the poems and what they process and what emerges, what they manifest um, from it. So, yeah. I actually met Tasaki Schenge at the public theater a couple mm -hmm. of times, not when you were performing because I think she was already passed at that. She had passed, yeah. But there was a version that she, there was um, an anniversary and she was able to be there, yes. And oh, sorry, I interrupted. An amazing lady. I had the opportunity of talking to her. And I believe you're right that she was one that really loved new and uh, changing and evolution. And so she certainly would love to see how her play has evolved over the years mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. how it has inspired someone like Camille. Let's talk about Camille because yeah. our viewers, they might, might not know that Camille you're talking about is the Tony Award nominee, Camille Brown, who is going to be the first black woman to serve in both roles as a director and a choreographer on Broadway, in, on a Broadway product, production in more than 65 years. Yes, it's historic. It's historic. It's historic, yeah. And she has reinvented and celebrating this celebration, the power of black woman, bringing this novelty. So how does it feel for you? You have been playing this role in different uh, plays, in different productions. Yeah. How does it feel for you being the woman in green in this production? Oh, yeah, I think it's an incredible experience um i you know i loved you know i love doing the work i just love this poem mm -hmm. i love the poems i love this piece um but to be a part of camille's broadway debut and also to be <laughs> in a production where it's only the second black woman the first in 65 years but the second black woman to serve as choreographer director um, in the theater uh, where it originally happened, I mean, it's um, it's overwhelming. You know, I think that, you know, I still I'm processing what that is. You know, I try not to think about it too much because I want to do the work, but mm -hmm. I am so honored to be a part of this moment uh, with this singular and just um, this woman who has such power in a tiny package. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um, such um such vision such clarity and generosity um so i just yeah it's a it's a real honor to you know to be a part of this it's you know it's difficult to it's difficult to even talk about but i'm so you know yeah yeah if you weren't doing the lady in green which <laughs> other lady would you be <laughs> Have you ever thought about that? That's so funny. No. <laughs> Think about it. 
think about it the moment. Now. You want me to think um, about it now? What, yeah. what, my gosh. Which of the women there you you like? I now I, I now I feel like I have a very limited imagination because I I'm so excited to do Lady in Green. I can't I couldn't imagine. So Honestly, I can't best imagine. For you. Wait, what? That is for you the one that. It's like the only one. It's the only one. I can't, you know, it's really the only one. Or like I said, I have a limited imagination and just, you know, we would have to sit here for a good 10. You would have to sit here for 10 minutes and I'd have to think about it. I have to go through all the poems and be like, hmm, you know. Okay, so could, can you tell me a little bit about each of the women for our viewer who haven't seen that? Oh, they are just beyond being stunning, deeply, deeply committed and talented, also super generous. Um, we have, of course, the lady in purple was in the public version with me. Mm -hmm. So she continues to um, delight me and give me joy every time I watch her do her poems. Um, you know, the lady in brown, uh, so I, I just was speaking of uh, the lady in purple, Alexandria Wales, lady in brown, Tendai Kumba, incredible um, dancer, incredible spirit. You know, she gets the train going as she starts with the first poem of the evening and the first dance of the evening. Uh, we've got like, you know, a lady in yellow that's got enormous energy and lightness and, um, a uh, lady in, um, they're all very yellow sexy. They're all very sexy. Woods, lady in, right? lady in yellow is D Woods, right? Mm -hmm. She brings, she brings incredible energy to the role, like a joy, light. Um, lady in blue, Stacy Sargent. Ah, uh, um, also just wicked um, sense of humor. Um, incredible range. Lady in orange as well. Uh, Amara Granderson surprises you all the time with her wit, with her power. Um, you know, Lady in Red, Kenita Miller is also astounding. Um, uh, you know, a voice like butter. <laughs> mm -hmm. You, you know what I mean? You just feel, you just feel she just captures you. Um, I, you know, I think that. Am I forgetting anybody? No, Lady. I mean, I, I just Ooh, lady in purple, lady in yellow, yellow, lady in green, in brown, and in red. Yeah, and I orange, just maybe no, you did talk about orange. orange. Yeah, I, I just I find you know, I find um, I find it just uh, a pleasure and a joy to to be with them, um, to be in a supporting space. Um, to listen to them do their poems and find new things every day. Um, they surprise me, they delight me. I mean, I just find it incredible company. Um, I, you know, there's no shortage of incredibly talented black women and women of color in this, in New York. You know, I, you know, they are, they are sisters to me as are the women that I was doing the show with at the public, they were incredible. So, you know, that's not, that's not hard. Mm -hmm. It's not hard to find women who are dedicated and in, in, in their practice, dedicated in their work and super generous um, in how they work with you to build the world of the piece. Um, I mean, and so we also can't forget, you know, the composer, Martha Redbone and also the incredible music director, Dia Love, and the three um, uh, associate choreographers that come on board with Camille and, you know, really shepherd and steward her vision. Um, and that's Malik and Maite and Mora Amina. And I can't believe I can't remember their names. Also, the associate director, Christina. Um, uh, are even Talvin Wilkes, our dramaturg. I mean, it's just, it's just um, a company that just holds everything. You know, the, everyone believes so much in the work. Everyone is so inspired by Camille's vision. Um, and Camille brings in people who can, um, who just have so much to offer. 
I mean, and not to mention, of course, we have these great stage managers, right? You know, um, um, goodness, Bernita uh, Robinson and Lark. Oh my gosh, I can't remember Lark's last name. Our costume designers, Serafina, Deshawn, Chris, the wig makers, you know, the wig designers, Cookie, Makeup, Kirk. I mean, just everybody, you know. You just are so, oh, and we have like a sound designer, Aaron. It's, a, I mean, sorry, Justin. I, um, a sound is, I mean, everybody just, you feel like everyone is like, how do we, how do we take care of this mm -hmm. precious gift that we have been given? I think about this every night. I think about Intazaki and um, the women, because a number of the women came, I think Trizana Beverly came. Um, oh my goodness, I'm forgetting. Uh, the choreographer, Diane McIntyre, I'm forgetting Aku. Uh, there were a number of women who were involved in the original production that came to see the show as well. And you just, I feel so grateful for um, what they have given to us, what they started, what they opened up for us. Um, you know, and I, yeah, so. No, no, it's fantastic. I mean, what do you think it was the, the reason why these, these poems became such a, a, a novelty and, and became so famous and were turned into movies, were turned into plays and so on. What you think made it happen like that? I mean, that's, that's so great. I mean, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, I, I could say that the, the poems are beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, they speak, uh, they, they seem to speak, you know, they speak with specificity. Um, but in speaking with specificity, they touch each of us, right? Um, particularly women with experiences that we have had as we move through the world. Um, there's history. If you don't know who Toussaint Louverture is, now you will know, right? When you see this work that that, you know, that this person led the only successful slave result, revolt in the Western hemisphere, you know, that, um, it's just, it's, it's a, it's a, I just think that the poems are, um, they speak they are deeply beautiful. resonant. Yes, they are deeply resonant. They speak in some way to everyone, right? They speak to heartbreak. They speak to hope and joy. Um, but, but then they speak very specifically, you know, there's the poem Harlem, you know, I used to live in the world and I moved to Harlem. They speak to disappointment. They speak to, I, I just, I, you know, it's a hard question to, to answer. And I, and I think maybe a scholar of Intizaki's work could do a better job, but I think it must be, at least I believe that some of it has to do with the, the fact that the yeah. specificity and the, the reach, the depth of them. But uh, it's running now. It started yes. the previews and the opening night is April 20. And this is the most important thing that is back on Broadway at the Booth Theater. And uh, if uh, you should tell our viewers why they should come and see this show, what would be the main reason they should come for? Oh, come see it because it is, it is a jolt of light into the darkness in the, of this COVID period. It will, it will wake you up and it will just flood you with with goodness you know it's i think i mean poetry we need poetry right now right we need dance we need song and we need to experience all of this together in a shared space um this 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 is it's a beautiful production and so yes come because it is a jolt of light into your system and into the darkness that has been this COVID period. Wonderful. Last questions. After this, what would you like to do or what you have already planned in the plan? I, oh, I have some things planned. I am doing a residency at MoMA, building a new piece. I have a BAM commission, Brooklyn Academy of Music for 2023, and also at the um, ICA, a museum, a contemporary museum in Boston, Massachusetts in 2023. So I have plenty to do wow. and I'm very so excited. Tell us about MoMA. 
What are you going to MoMA do? is, well, you know, they they did a m massive re, you know, extension. And part of that extension is a studio um, that they, you know, um, are opening up for performance practice, mm -hmm. dance practice, because we know that um, um, MoMA has a perform performing arts uh, curatorial wing, and they are deeply invested in um, performing arts as a, a um, as performing arts is, is an essential form that should be archived, that needs to be supported, that has imp that has a direct impact and relationship with uh, visual artwork. It speaks so much to um, community. Like, what is it? I think you know, MoMA is invested in um, bringing bodies into the space and troubling ideas about you know what has value, right? I mean, it's not. It shouldn't just be about our objects that are placed on walls, but what are the things that living bodies are doing with each other for each other? And what is that relationship? Um, how do we, you know, how do, how does the live performance, how does a liveness yeah. um, um, and how do the ways in which we practice aliveness um, speak to what's happening in our culture? Um, right. And how do we remember these things? I don't know. That's what that's what I think. I hope that's clear for folks. Absolutely. It's yeah. you know, modern is a museum of modern art. Yes. And performing is modern art. It's so modern art. yes. And okay. and and you do installations also. So this yeah. is probably part of, of, of what you do. Part of my practice, yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So congratulations for all this projects that you have already thank you because uh, i know that it's not so easy for artists any kind of artist to know what they're doing next and the fact that you already planted 2023 is wonderful yes yes so, i try yeah but you know the you know how plans go have gone in the last couple of years so hey. let's hope we can't, you know, we can't decide. Well, we can decide for ourselves. Yes. What's happening outside of us, uh, it's not in our power. Yes, exactly. So those are the plans for you, then we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> so thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you for uh, the insight into this play that is going to be amazing. And uh, Congratulations and thank you so much. As we say in Italian, say it again. Auguri. 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 Wishes. Oh, wishes. Yeah. Auguri. Well, thank you so much, Maria. It was a pleasure to spend this time with you. Likewise. Bye bye. And thank you, our viewers. See you next time, 12 30, every Saturday, 12 30, on my Harlem Portraits. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.